some industries, it seems, are virus-proof, and that includes crime. So fraudsters are increasingly targeting members of the public or organisations and preying on people's uncertainty or on their goodwill. So more time indoors means often more time online, which is a perfect place for fraudsters to thrive. Hello. Ross Fraser is one of many people reporting attempted scams. Ross, what happened to you? The phone rang, I picked it up. There was a pre-recorded message saying, this is uh, a government um, message. Your uh, internet's going to be taken down in four hours. The timing coincided with the first day that most people started working from home. It was obviously clearly intended to panic people who were working from home and thinking, oh my God, if the internet goes down, I won't be able to do my work. They operate on uh, a combination of people's anxiety and suspension of belief. So how exactly are the fraudsters doing it? Well, there are the old-fashioned doorstep scams where criminals turn up at the homes of often older people, say that they'll collect their shopping for them, take their money and don't come back. There are also the online scams and cons emails, for example, that trick people into opening malicious attachments, which puts people at risk of identity theft. There's also refund tricks, so companies offering uh, people money back if they've had to cancel holidays. Donation scams, so thieves extorting money from consumers uh, by claiming that they are collecting donations for a COVID-19 vaccine. Counterfeit goods like fake hand sanitizers, uh, face masks, swabbing kits uh, sold online or door to door. And these products can often be dangerous. But there is in fact action being taken to clamp down on products like this, like this plugin, which was designed by Vistal Works with help from Police Scotland and Trading Standards. Okay. Vicky Brock designed the software. So we built mathematical models and data technology that reads a listing much as a human being would read a listing. Is this a counterfeited or fake product? Is it a product that's got a chemical or a substance in it that means that it absolutely shouldn't be on sale? Then triggers a warning if um, mathematically we think it is medium or particularly high risk. So then the consumer can make a decision about whether they want to proceed with the purchase or not. Vicky, what advice would you give to people who think that they may be a potential victim for a scam? I would really, really think very carefully. If all the mainstream suppliers of this, the brand itself doesn't have it, if brands and sellers that you have heard of, mainstream names don't have it, how could this possibly be being offered on an online marketplace by somebody that you've never heard of? You know, the chances are it's stolen, it's counterfeit, or it's substituted for something else. Thanks, Vicky. So Police Scotland are, of course, warning members of the public to be vigilant. If somebody does appear at your door or contacts you through social media, then don't feel pressurised to respond. If someone's at your door, then take your time Make sure that you're not victimised by somebody trying to take advantage of you and reach out to friends and family if you need support. And of course, all of these organisations like Trading Standards, Advice Direct Scotland and the police are always available to help. So you may be isolated at the moment, but when it comes to protecting yourself and your money, you're not on your own. Nick Sheridan, BBC News. <laughs>